All right, baby, tall guy, Carl Reeves, back with another video, man. What we doing today, because today's a super legendary day. We doing a 2018 GLE 63 AMG. Now, for those who've been out the loop, I just got done doing this the same day. As you can see, I got the same attire on. I just got done doing the uh, 2018 E63 S uh, wagon joint uh, Mercedes not too long ago, man. And now today I'm doing this. I mean, let's just walk around the exterior of the whip real quick. I mean, look at the wheels. Look at the brake calipers. Look at it. AMG on the mooks with the wheels looking like that. I mean, come on with the V8 now. This is that V8 bi turbo, just like how it is in the E63 uh, S joint. So it's su it's no games and it's super legendary, man. No games being played with the AMG on the tips right there. Let you know, ain't no games being played. Got the AMG right here. I like how they got that AMG everywhere. GLE 63 AMG right there with smoke still coming out the thing. So we literally just got here, man. Look at them wheels. I'm not even a big fan of like chrome type aluminum looking wheels no more. But these are the only exception i actually really like those man look at the front fascia of it i mean look at it is that not a menacing suv look at it with the two lines right there look like dorsal fins on a great white shark that thing look cold let's just go ahead and hop in the whip real quick you see the little step ladder right there too i don't even see the point in that but you know maybe for the shorter human beings in the world mm -hmm. that might apply to them but let's go ahead and look at the door panel real quick man you got the leather right here you got the black uh, luxuriousness right here. You got all the stitchings and all that. Look real good, man. You got the little storage space. You got the AMG here, AMG there. Big bolster up seats, AMG here, AMG here. You got AMG in the front hood. You got AMG everywhere. It's an AMG product, man. So it's only right that they put the AMG brand on there. You got the big bolster and seats with the big enchilada mix right here in the middle. I rock with that. That's heavy. You got the big bolstering up on the bottom for the butt cheeks and lock you in in case you want to go around some corners. You got that too. You hop in now. Mind you, I'm 6'10". Let me see if this is pushed all the way back and all the way down. So push the seat all the way down, and here goes my leg room. Cool, right? Let's talk about the head room. Cool, right? Start it up. Woo, with the AMG that pops up right there. Oh, let's turn that down. Yeah, good, good copyright. But yeah, we got the digital display here. Now this isn't like the E63, where it's like one big digital swoop and another big digital swoop. This got the digital screen here, obviously, and they got the little analog gauges here. But as you can see, it still has 200 on the dash. Don't worry about the gas light being on. They ain't get, they're supposed to fill it up with some gas before they gave it to me. So this is going to be a short driving review. So when, if it's a short ride, driving review, don't be asking why you only drive for three, four minutes. Well, the gas light's on, and I ain't putting gas in it. But you got the digital display right here in the middle for the people like myself who like the digital display. That ain't enough for me to have just a little digital MOOC here. But the fact that it has 200 on the, on the gauge cluster and then it got the 8,000 RPM, which looks super legendary here, and it got the AMG right there as well, that helps it out a little bit more for me, but I still just don't like the design right here. But it's a Mercedes AMG product, so you gotta know it's super legendary, even though it only has the baby MOOC screen right there, which I need more. But this right here makes up for a lot too, because that's a big time screen display right there. You still got the little mouse thing right here that you can navigate and work through and do all this other stuff with. And you can click on it, you know, all that good stuff, swivel, 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 all that good stuff. Now, you got the sport thing right here. Oh, you can't press it. You got to click it over. Boom. You got sport plus. You got snow. And you can hear that exhaust on switch up when you do all this stuff too. And you got the individual. Then you got sport, sport plus suspension, mechanics. I think that's what it is. Ride high. You can raise up the whip. Traction control log. We always keep that on. And then you got all like analog buttons right here. Now this right here, I'm not going to lie to y'all because I'm just an honest dude, man. I think this is very ugly. But you do got all the little analog buttons. And you do got like the little bit of aluminum or chrome, whatever you want to call this right here. And then you got like the little buttons, you know. But I just don't see the point in having all this right here. Just eliminate all this and give me like a digital thing or make it a little bit more wavy. I don't really like this right here either but i get it adjust the like temperatures and it is very responsive too now for the people who watched my e63 uh amg s review you're gonna know that i really really like this steering wheel i like how i got the amg here it got the flat bottom i mean it just feels super sturdy and super luxurious and super expensive if that makes sense but you got the alcatar right here i wasn't a big fan of this before i did a mercedes review but after doing mercedes reviews i'm a big fan of the alcatar steering wheels man that's big time legendary now this is a Mercedes that doesn't have the Burmeister. This has Harman Kardon sound system. But for those who are new to my channel and they watched all my videos, first off, you're embarrassing. Second of all, go back watch all my old videos because <laughs> I love the Harman Kardon sound system because it's in my Hellcat and it's in my Jeep Trackhawk. So I love the Harman Kardon sound system. So it's not a downgrade to get a Mercedes that has the Harman Kardon sound system because both of them are super legendary and both sound super crispy and good. Now, working your way over here, you got the little tight black, like almost wood grain. Don't really know what to call it. So I'm just going to say it looks super nice. It's super luxurious because it is you got the amg right there on the mat you got the leather all around that door panel as well you got the obviously the matching luxurious seat that i'm sitting in right now but just on the right side
right side for the passenger. You look up, you got the Alcantara all on the, like the sun visor thing right here. I don't know how to open it. Boom. Okay. And this probably just holds like, you know, your bag of money or whatever you want to call it. And then next thing you know, you look up right here, you got Alcantara around the whole ceiling. I was supposed to say steering wheel. Ceiling. You got Alcantara on the whole entire uh, ceiling like that, man. It looks super nice and super good. I mean, come on, man. Big time legendary. And I got the same thing on my Jeep Trackhawk, so I live with it every day. And I can tell you that it does make a difference. Now, as you can see, I got a Mercedes card in my hand. Now, I'm not plugging this dealership because they told me I have to in order to review the car. No. I rock with this dude, Don Patterson, right here, man. So make sure y'all rock with him, too. You see all his info right there? This is at Maplewood Mercedes. It says St. Paul, but it's like Maplewood. There you go, right in the bottom. Don Patterson, he's a sales manager, man. He's going to get you in the whip you want and all that good stuff, man. So rock with the people up there. I rock with everybody up at this Mercedes dealership. Most Mercedes dealerships are really kind of bougie. This one is not, and I rock with them. Hey, I want to know one thing that's kind of dope. So when you hit this button right here, right, it shows you it's like a light in the back. So uh, you hit this button, right, and you can see all these lights are off right now in the back. But watch when I hit the button. They all come on, and I hit the button again. And they all go off. But hold on one second. What am I thinking, man? I didn't even pop the hood and get to talk about the engine and the torques and the horsepowers and all that. So let's go ahead and uh, do that, man. I'm going to pop this here for y'all and let y'all know what it is. Here we go. That's it, man. 550 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque, man. No games being played. And it's a V8. For all the V8 lovers out there like myself, this is actually going to give you what you want and a whole lot more, man. Let's go ahead and shut the hood because y'all get what I'm saying, man. 550 and 516, that's no games being played at all. Now, after doing that S or E S63 uh, wagon joint for Mercedes, now I'm wondering and I'm curious to know if this, with my seat set back at my set in that 610, 230, Am I going to fit in this seat? Because in the E63, I didn't sit on this side. I sat on that side, which obviously has more legroom because I didn't scoot it back for an abnormally sized human being like myself. So let's go ahead and put this thing in there. Let's see how this works out, man. Let's see if I can shut the door without breaking my kneecap. Yep, I'm good. I mean, it's super tight, though. It was like a little bitty, like, you know, pin needle type away from busting my whole kneecap open. But it's not that bad, I guess, because it didn't break my kneecap, but it's still bad. If I had to go 0 out of 10 between, like, leg room and head room on the leg room, I would get this right here like a good solid two with, with my seat set back at my setting. Like I said, I'm an abnormally sized human being. So don't let that be the judge of you or your kids or anybody else that you might think would be sitting back here. And you got Alcatel on the side. I didn't even notice that. That's super nice. But anyway, to stay on topic, this is for an abnormally sized human being. I would never be sitting in the back. And I don't think you, as a human being, would have any 6'10 best friends who would be sitting in the back. Either you would do them the courteous of being able to sit in the front. But now, as far as the headroom is concerned, my headroom is actually cool. It's on the ceiling. Like, I can hear, I can feel, like, my hair scraping on the ceiling. And I'm pretty sure you can see it. But it's not super bad. Like, I can sit like this for a long time, actually. Because I'm upright and everything. The seat ain't leaned back as far as it can be or nothing. And I'm cool. It's the leg room, as you can see. That's a super tight squeeze for me. But as I'm sitting here talking to y'all, man, let's go ahead and look at the price. 2008, 2018 AMG GLE. Now, there is a GLE 63 S, I do believe. This is just the GLE 63. And this is 102550 All the bells and whistles, you get to $110,115. 14 city miles on a gas uh, tip. And then you got 18 highway, 15 combined. Two on a fuel economy thing. The E63 AMG is actually better on gas than this, and that's crazy. Now, for all the people who watched my Mercedes review where I did, like I just mentioned like three, four times already in this video, where I drove the um, E63 S wagon Mercedes looking thing, AMG, that when I drove and I got in the backseat review, I told y'all and I showed y'all that when I get out the backseat, I can always tell if something really doesn't have good backseat room for me versus if it does because I can just usually just get out and like just hop out like this, right? Now, as you can see, this leg is stuck. So what I got to do in this one is I got to kind of turn to my side like this, let one leg out first, and then kind of just glide out like that. That's when I know a car in the backseat isn't made for a big abnormally sized human being like myself. Now, I usually don't do trunk reviews, but I'm kind of curious just to see how much trunk space this thing got. Damn, that thing's kind of fast. You know, on my Jeep track, I'll go kind of slow and it kind of beeps like 10 seconds before it even actually starts lifting type. I ain't trying to come at it, but I'm trying to kind of type in. Actually, has a lot of backseat room, or not backseat room, I'm sorry, a lot of trunk space. And you got a little cubby hole space right there and a little net, so that helps. Let's go ahead and put this thing back, lift it up. I like that, good quality too, where the button at? Here it goes right here. Let's see how quick it goes when it shuts. 
Yeah, that thing is actually fast as hell. Way faster than my Jeep Trackhawk for sure. All right, baby, here we go. Now, this is the driving part. Now, y'all know this is my favorite time with a whole review is to drive the car, man, because that's the legendary. That's where all the good beans is at and all that good stuff, where the protein at, where the meat to the bone is at. But this is the key fob right here, man. I don't like this key fob, to be honest. I don't like any kind of key fob. This ain't just Mercedes. Any key fob that comes with this, like in case this breaks, you got to get in and turn. I'm not with all that. I don't care. I want a key fob that looks super legendary like that one that I had on the E63 or even one that's like this for my uh, Jeep Trackhawk. Like at minimum, I need like a key fob that's going to look like my Trackhawk key or either my Hellcat key. Like I honestly don't know why more people don't make key fobs that got like bright colors to them because it looks super dope, you know, but hey, whatever. A lot of people want to be conservative, but let's go ahead and start this thing up. That happened to me again. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I did the same thing. I just usually just tap on the brake and they just do like a quick tap like how I do in like my Hellcat or my Trackhawk. But for some reason on the phone, it seems like you gotta hold the button just a little bit longer. I don't know why, that could, I embarrassed myself twice doing it. Let me see. Yeah, and once you hold it, it like it just like goes. It's not like a quick little boom though, you know? But I don't know. Let's go ahead and buckle up and let's go. Y'all gonna know what it is, man. Y'all gonna tell me. I know y'all gonna comment below. Y'all always do. So let me know, man. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and put this thing in drive. And let's go, baby. Let's see the first initial feels of the GLE 63. Because this is a legendary SUV. Now, I've seen these on the road so many times. And no matter what, though, when you somebody, when you see somebody driving like this kind of whip in a Mercedes or any of the foreign whips and they got the AMG and it's the top of the MOOC, that Alcantara feels super legendary on the steering wheel. Anytime you see somebody driving these kind of cars and you know it's top of the MOOC, you be like, yo, that person got a dummy bag. I swear, I don't care who it is. If you know cars and you see these, and you know the price range that it costs to be in something super legendary like this, you'd be like, yo, you got big salute, big respect to you, champ, because you paid a bag for that. But anyway, let's go ahead and take off and let's see what we got here, man. Let's see, let's let's see what this thing brings to the table, man. 550 and 516 pounds of torque or something like that. Let's see. Yeah. You know what's crazy, man? These joints. They feel like muscle. I am not gonna lie to y'all, man. The Mercedes that I did before, the 63 Wagon S, and then this right here, the GLE uh, AMG 63, not the S. I, I don't even know if there is an S, but I do believe there is an S. Y'all gonna let me know if there is or ain't. But this right here and that right there, both of them have felt like complete type kind of muscle cars. I don't know who this is calling me in the middle of my car view, man, messing up my wave. You know, three of them all, that's three of them, okay. Hold on, three, let's see, Mr. Organic. What's happening, brother? Yeah, I'm on the way. All right, 15 minutes away. Okay, bet. We got. I got. I got one more review to do. I'm doing an AMG 63 move right now. All right. All right, for sure, bro. See you in a minute. But right now, I'm gonna finish up this review. I got to hit this thing real quick, just a little bit, just a little bit. Let me see. Let me hit that Sport Plus. Though. Hold on, let me hear what that sound like. Oh, that joint just crackle. You heard it? Hold on, let me see if I can get that crackle one more time. What? Yeah, <laughs> pussy part. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. Driving these Mercedes is like, yo, these joints are like kind of like muscle whips, like the same kind of feel I get. Like, I don't care if they're twin turbocharged, naturally aspirated, whatever. The feeling that I get, I don't care about none of the analytics. The feeling that I get when I hit this pedal feels like a muscle car. Y'all hear that crackling? What? Oh, this joint, this joint is legendary, man. The feeling that I get when I hit this pedal is something like I get in my Jeep Trackhawk. Now it's not the same thing. Oh, damn, y'all feel that? That was just a little baby tap, y'all, a little whip whiplash. No, my Jeep Trackhawk, that obviously has 707 horsepower, 640 pound feet of torque, so it's nowhere near the same. But the thing is, is it has a muscle like it, though. It has, it has that, you know, when you hit that pedal, make it, you know, tighten up. Yo. This joint is nuts. Listen, man, anybody getting this kind of car, you got to respect them. I don't care if you're an American muscle car enthusiast, uh, whatever enthusiast, you got to respect any person that you see in this car. And from now on, in my head, whenever I see a 2018 AMG 63, I'm going to be like, hey, psh, listen here, champ, you got it. I mean, to be real, you know I'm still going to try them because if I'm in my Hellhawk, I ain't listen here, buddy. I ain't a respect to you, salute to you. But if we had a light, what's up? You know what I mean? Hey, man, well, listen here, man. I'm about to pull back up to the dealership, man. I just want to give y'all this quick review because this is a legendary SUV, man. And I'm doing legendary things in it, man. And the content going to keep getting better and better and better. So make sure while you're here and you watch this video, you hit that subscribe button. So that way you can stay in the loop and what I got going on, all the car reviews that I'm going to be doing, and all my Hellcat uh, content coming y'all way, all my Hellhawk content coming y'all way, man. But like I said, man, stay in the loop so that way you ain't got to jump back in the loop, man. But without further ado, man, this video is over. It's done. 
I'll holla at y'all the next one, man. Nothing really else to talk about, man. Y'all got a big legendary review. Let me give y'all a quick pull as I do this. You turn the pull back into this dinner shit, man. So that way I can end it like this. Here we go. Y'all ready? <laughs> big time legendary. Look. Hit a crack on. Watch. Ha, ha, ha.